Uh, we can watch something later today, yeah, I guess. I do need to do something after this stream, though, so. Oh, here's the best character. So, you're the talk of the town. Keith Ingram. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. The name's Keith. A pleasure meeting you, York. Sure is a big scar. It's bigger than I thought it would be. So, hey. Keith, I have a couple of questions about the incident. Huh? Sure, fire away, man. Did you know Anna Graham? Yeah, of course, man. Poor little Anna. She was such a nice girl. I mean, what kind of sicko would do that to her? Well, I'm here to catch that sicko. Listen, even the smallest piece of information might be useful to me. If there's anything you noticed or want to let me know, contact me. Okay, will do, bro. You got my cooperation, FBI. Another thing. I'll be frequenting your store during my stay here. So I'll see you around. <laughs> sure thing, bro. We got what you need. So drop in anytime. <laughs> huh. Great Koch. They are exclamation points, and they're italicized for some reason. It's just the style of this game. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. York? Sounds like a last name. Richard Dunn, darts bar owner. I'm Richard Dunn. I own one of the bars here. It's called Sweary 65. How'd you <coughs> name? Oh, it's great. Director's name. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. Murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Huh, I guess you're right. So, how did you know Anna? Shut I've known up, her since Cass. she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. I was hoping to see a certain person in here, but I guess not? Yeah, I guess that person isn't in right now, which means I can't do the side quest I wanted to do. Oh, it's unfortunate to be me. Loading screens are the bane of my existence. Good for you, Cass. Now, time to save again, just in case something happens. Or I can say no, apparently. Square 65. Wish I knew who, what time it was open until. 
Because I'm sure it's not open right now because Richard is over at the store. Whoa. That wasn't the intended, like, method there, but alright. Let's see if I can interact with the door or anything to tell me what time it's open. Zack, is there something here that you want to check out? Well, just do as you please. We can head to the forest later. Six a.m. to ten thirty. That's what it says on the door. Um. So it should be open right now. I guess he's out to lunch or something. I don't know. I guess I'll go and do the story mission for now. Zack, we can take a rest if you're tired. I'm driving down an endless road. Seriously though, this is like really far? Is this the right place or is it doesn't look right. I'm curious though, so I'm driving up here anyway. Why are there sparks behind me? That was weird. Oh, and this is where the bonus. And thanks to Ryan's amazing miracle working skills, I uh, can now shoot. Well, shoot upwards, I should say. Where? If I could. Oh, there we go. hip bone. The stomach bone goes next to the hip bone. A human bone? This doesn't look related to the case, but shouldn't I let someone know? There we go. So I just have to put a person together. Luckily, you know, I don't have to do that right now. I just have to get all the pieces as I play the game. <laughs> Ryan's a miracle worker. He taught me how to raise my arms up higher and uh, tilt my head backwards. He is a saint and a gentleman. Zach, if you notice anything, just stop me. The gentleman and the scholar. Yay, I made it. Eventually. Greenvale Forest Park. Since 1368, apparently. That can't have said 1368. You tell us to come here, and you keep us waiting. 
Is this the way the FBI treats their own people? Hello, George. I just had some things I had to do. You really are pushing it, you know that? I'm sorry if I upset you, but it was important stuff. To me, at least. That isn't the issue here. We are in the middle of a homicide investigation. He's not listening, George. I think we both know by now how little he thinks of other people's feelings. I'll be more careful from now on. I promise. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. And you are Jim Green? That I am, son. I keep these woods. Jim Green Forest Park Warden. Well, you're doing a fine job. Well, I used to be a tree surgeon. And tree surgeon? discovered the body. Yes, my grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. Isaac Ingram found an honest body. God, that's creepy. And Isaiah Ingram found an honest body. Zach, you see that? Twins. Just like in my dream. We gotta keep an eye on these two. I'm sorry. Could we talk away from the boys? I want to help your investigation, but I don't want them to hear this. Very well. Emily, please. I'll just take them over there, then. Thank you. And then... Hold on. Don't do anything without asking me. These children were the first to witness the crime scene. I want to talk to them. Come on, they're just kids. They have no idea what really happened to Anna. That doesn't matter. You agree with me, right, Zach? How heartless. Do you ever think of other people's feelings, ever? Emily's right. That's stone cold even for the sake of investigation. Children see things in pure, simple terms. They may have seen something we adults would never spot, and they are here at our request as well. We could at least chat with them and see if they want to make a statement. Are you serious? I never joke about matters like this. <laughs> oh that my. smile, though. Don't worry. They aren't as fragile as you think. Look at them, standing so upright. Now then, Isaac, Isaiah, tell me, what did you find here? Anna, she was so pretty. She had a red dress on. Her hair was shining. Bright gold hair. There were lots of animals around her. Squirrels, weasels, and a snake. A real snake. We didn't know until then. But we know now. Anna was the fairy of the forest. She was a goddess. She smiled when she saw us. She looked so happy. That's right, Isaac. Isaiah, she was a fairy, a goddess. I'm sure she is playing with those animals even now. Of course she is. Yeah, of course. Most useful information, boys. Well, Emily, you can take them now. Okay, Zack, this is where Anna's body was. And that means our unsub, our unknown subject, was here too. So, what happened here? My question is this, is it Anna or Anna? Because that's just a flipping thing. Profiling start. This should look familiar from the beginning of the game. Well, not exactly familiar, but it's different, but... Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Okay. Zack, look, the depression of the grass. I think we have a clue. 
You got two bent pieces of grass. I don't think they're pieces of grass. I think they're patches of grass, but whatever. Profiling start again. Okay, so we're able to see more of it. Picture of a vest with holes. That mark on the back, that's the same mark that's on her hand. Just skip the rest of that. So we're missing some clues here somewhere. Oh, it's a really good thing I fixed that earlier. That issue I was having? I wouldn't have been able to shoot this out of the tree. I would have been stuck. Oh, right, no, this wasn't an important thing. This is just the card. So, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to get it while I was here, and that would have sucked. And by the way, these pickles here, if you want them, they are infinite. So you can just pick up as many pickles as you can carry if you so desire. I will not be doing that because I don't really need to. I haven't had to eat anything at all yet. Just if you're doing everything in the game, then you'll need food to sustain you. It hasn't even been a day yet for me, though. So... There we go, got some agent honor. Here we go, this is the thing that I need to shoot. Alright, Crimson. I'll talk to you later, man. I'm gonna be doing more streams probably later this week of this, so if you wanna join in any of those, just, you know, shoot me a message saying when they'll be, and I'll try to, you know, tell you. All right. We don't have the final part of the puzzle yet. So just skip that and we'll just keep on moving on. There is a bone around here, but we can't do anything well, I mean, I could go get that now, but here we are. This is the one that I wouldn't have been able to shoot out of the tree, because it would have been too high. Missing piece of heel shoe, of pin heel shoe. Profiling start. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's upside down. I guess this is meant to be an anti-peace sentiment then. These holes on the ground were made by uh, high stiletto heels all around here. And this depression here, Agent Morgan, I see what happened here. shoes 
while his voice got low. Enjoying it. Sicko. I knelt down. And... Disgusting. George, you certainly have a vivid imagination. An interesting theory. Don't you think, Zack? Uh, what was his name again? That Hollywood producer. That's right. Joel. We really ought to introduce George to him, Zack. Profiling is a little different from writing a screenplay, though. An idea being interesting doesn't make it fact. Let me enlighten you, George. The footprints reveal that one of the heels were missing from the shoes. And they're different from Anna's shoes that we saw at the office. Furthermore, there would be even more disgusting evidence if he did kneel and, well, do as you suggested. If you want proof, go ahead and try it for yourself. He knelt here for a reason other than simple perversion. Zack, what was he doing in front of Anna? Praying. Profiling starts. Just like the twins said, she was a goddess. The unsung, our unknown subject, offered prayers to Anna's body. It's bitten out of the tongue, massive body wound. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who is Miss Stiletto Heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark, then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane. The owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore. With either a lot of metal or metal machinery or something like that. The, the old, old lumber, lumber mill. mill. Then it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? Alright. Mission completed. Profiling. 
Total cleared time, three hours. Total number of days, one. Total enemies defeated, 56. Total number of continues, zero. Payment rewarded, $240. Basic wage, unpaid salary, 6620 Funds total amount, 12694 so the unpaid salary is all the agent honor and all that you get. I don't think it's added immediately. I think it's added whenever you finish the area that you're in. The lumber mill is pretty far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure though. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way, and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this. I will say this though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well then, everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence, and carefully figure the unsub's M.O., modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me.